friends, Dean here with Escape Me Gaming. Today is going to be more of a personal account of my um, fascination and history or passion for art. Um, you know, going back from when I was a kid, I've always been kind of a visual person and uh, really enjoy art and everything that uh, it entails, every type of art even. I'm, I'm pretty open-minded and have a wide range of taste within art, graphic design, and of course, you know, it carries over into films and games and um, uh, interior design, industrial design, everything. I've always been fascinated with it. My father um, was a civil engineer for the city of Portland, Maine early on, so uh, as a kid I used to, you know, take the city bus by myself and then go all the way to downtown Portland, get off and see him at the city hall and then he'd go in there into the planning department and i get to watch <clears throat> him doing a lot of maps. Uh, he redesigned a lot of the downtown areas and off-ramps as the new uh, Highway 95 went through central Portland. He designed a lot of the off-ramps and pedestrian walkways and things like that. So I was always around a lot of architectural renderings and colored pencils and magic marker comps and that kind of thing. And uh, kind of growing up, I think just being around, <clears throat> you know, the, a lot of artistic elements at home or when I was visiting my father, you know, at work. Later, uh, my dad started his own business as a a graphic designer and design logo designs. Everything was done by hand back then. He, he's not, looking back at it now, he's not the greatest artist as far as a fine artist, but technically he was good with graphic design and basic illustration and stuff like that. But just being around that environment was really a huge uh, help early on. Kind of encouraged me to get into arts. Um, you know, I'd take trips to New York City with him. My dad was into photography, got a lot of camera equipment. So when we, we were there, we got to see a lot of really great art museums. Um, the Guggenheim Museum in New York. I've been to, you know, some of the ones in Boston. The Smithsonian uh, National Gallery of Art. Um, and the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. when I lived in Silver Springs, Maryland years ago, back in the 70s. And uh, So I've seen some of the best art museums. Uh, um, Museum of Modern Art right over here in San Francisco. Uh, we go over to Carmel quite often over on the coast, a little town where, Clint East, where uh, uh, actually Clint Eastwood lives over in that area. And there's some great little bars and tons of galleries in Santa Cruz, California as well. So one of my passions even today is to go through a lot of the galleries and just look at art. It doesn't matter if it's landscapes, it doesn't matter if it's impression, impressionistic art. Uh, down in LA, I used to go to the Getty Museum quite a bit. In fact, I designed, when the new Getty Museum opened, I designed a lot of the signage that went on the road on the way up there. We did a huge event party the company used to work for, for the grand opening. So I got to spend some time up at the Getty Museum and took a lot of pictures and really enjoyed uh, my time up there. So I've just, you know, been around art my whole life and artistic things. And uh, I've gone through phases with it. You know, in school I spent too much time doodling and drawing. I can't even count how many times I've drawn spaceships and the Enterprise and the Klingon <laughs> spaceships when I was a kid in class instead of paying attention. So my grades always suffered. But I just love to doodle and draw and be around uh, art. I've always been fascinated with just, you know, visual things. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I actually love gaming because it's just visually, it's a feast for the eyes. Sometimes it's a visual bombardment or overload, other times it's just something very peaceful. Uh, I saw this game Flower they have for the PlayStation uh, 4 you can download. I've never played it but I was intrigued by it and I looked and I saw some gorgeous little gameplay videos of it. And So I, I take my hat off to any, even within gaming, people that try new things. A lot of the indie games have a really heavy art style behind them which, which I really enjoy. And, um, but anyway, I just, you know, that's my fascination with art. It started as a kid. Uh, you know, I did a lot of, uh, like, drawings in school. I was probably, you know, usually the best artist at every little elementary school and junior high school and high school I've been at. I used to do, volunteer a lot of my time to do murals in high school. Uh, they give me extra credit, you know, to skip classes and I could do, you know, murals for the basketball team or... Uh, the school spirit type stuff. Now there's a lot of people that go around and do those kind of murals. But back in the old days, a lot of students did those, and, and uh, they, I, you know, I got a lot, kind of a little bit of recognition. I was always kind of a shy uh, kid in school, but that was the one thing that I could do that I was good at. It really sucked at sports. I enjoyed sports. I loved playing basketball and street hockey and um, you know baseball as a kid and all those things. But I just never was very good at them. Tennis, I tried. I've tried golf, uh, pretty much everything. But I keep going back to art. That was the one, you know, 
uh, thing that I was, I guess, good at. Uh, never was good enough, I felt, for my parents. My dad kind of pushed me and you know, maybe he was doing it for the best. But every drawing I did, yeah, that's not bad. Somebody, you should, you know, fix this. And if you just did the head this way or whatever. So he was kind of highly critical. Uh, now I see, kind of see it for what it is. It's just his nature. It wouldn't matter how perfect the drawing was. I did a photorealistic drawing uh, years ago uh, that looked just like a photograph. And he even picked that apart. So... In a way, it kind of forces you to, to try harder and to reach inside and see, okay, how can I perfect it even more? So I, I, I tend to lean towards more photorealism stuff now, but with a stylized um, you know, style to it. I've done a lot of tons of pencil drawings, pen and ink drawings. I don't have a whole lot of them left. I usually give a lot of my art away. I just give it away. I enjoy the process, kind of like building a model car or train or plane or whatever. I enjoy the process of constructing it, designing it, and doing it. Then once it's done, it's like it's meaningless to me. So I usually give them to family members, relatives, friends. Um, you know, a couple years ago I did this uh, 68 El Camino painting for Mark Bustler. He loves El Caminos, and initially that's what he wanted was an older 68 or 69 one. And I talked to him about it back and forth. <clears throat> and he goes, yeah, my dad and I are looking for one, but they're kind of pricey, you know. So I went ahead and started the painting before he bought his 72 El Camino. And I uh, did that red El Camino. You can see it in the back, a classic game room, you know, hanging up on the right side uh, wall up there. And um, and then Mark, uh, a few months later, did a really nice uh, unboxing. When I finally finished it and mailed it to him, he did a nice unboxing video of it. Uh, and then it was gracious enough to do an interview with me. You can see uh, I'll have a link below to the three parts interview with Mark Bustler. And I, I kind of delve in and talk about my art and my history, you know, uh, how I came up with the concept of doing these car cutout paintings. I kind of came up with the idea in, in 1987. I cut out a Ferrari Testarossa for a big upholstery shop down in Hermosa Beach, California. It was right on Pacific Coast Highway. got a lot of visibility. And I did it. Back then, everything was hand done, hand painted. Today, it's all done on a computer. You know, It doesn't take a lot of talent to crank the stuff out. But in the old days, if you had the ability, the hand-eye coordination, and you could draw, and especially if you could use these sign brushes and quills, and paint everything by hand. We'd line up construction signs and line up, um, did lots of murals, pictorials for a new shopping center coming, and I'd do these giant plywood signs and I'd, you know, hand paint how the shopping center was going to look with the cars driving by and the whole deal. And there was a talent for that, and you get paid really well. I made really good money even right out of high school doing that. And then eventually, when I segued down to Los Angeles from Fresno, and um, it took me a few years to get into it, but I eventually got into the, you know, Hollywood and working for TV production companies and uh, as a subcontractor for 20th Century Fox and then later for, a, you know, a company called Party Planners West where you did these giant corporate events, mostly Hollywood wrap-up parties. And I was in charge of doing the art, uh, kind of the art director running the, the, the art department, designing these enormous sets and, you know, giant monumental deals and, Everything was hand painted and cut out with jigsaws and just a lot of hand craftsmanship that went into things. Uh, again, today that's all jobbed out. Computers, you know, flatbed router cutters cut all that stuff out now. And it's, everything's like it's automatic. It's, there's not a lot of talent behind it. There's still, you can still, you know, get jobs in Hollywood as, you know, standby set painters. That's what I did. Uh, sometimes you wait around for hours and they just have you just paint these doors or you know what we want to darken these walls or, let's paint them this color you know or let's do a subtle glaze or faux finish over them to give it kind of a weathered effect so it looks like an old police uh, you know station that's been aged and hasn't been painted in years and so you'd have to kind of emulate that and make it look like that so it was a way early on to <clears throat> I enjoyed you know working in Hollywood for a short while and uh, Los Angeles doing a lot of this great signs, just rewarding, driving down the street, and hey, I did that sign, hey, I painted that sign there, I painted this, did this gold leaf lettering on this front window, or what have you, and it had a lot of uh, rewarding uh, self-satisfaction coming back to that, driving around and just seeing things that you created with your hands, and you can show your friends and family or whatever, and it was kind of fun. Um, <clears throat> In the meantime, I would still do a lot of drawing. I used to draw tons of cars, and uh, I like doing portraits too. I did a lot of portraits of family members and friends, and um, I still do some today. I did some huge 30 by 40 inch drawings of Woody Allen. They took both of those drawings that I did. I did one of Woody Allen by himself, a close up, and one of him and Diane Keaton from the Annie Hall movie. Those took about 90 minutes each. 
they're just very loose, um, fastly drawn, and the, the, the card, the cardstock or paper that I did them on is kind of yellowed over the years, but I still have them. I, I've hung on to a couple. I did this one I have over here in my op, in my little game room here of Mel Gibson. I did in 1982 or 83 when the Road Warrior came out. And I still have that one, pen and ink drawing. Some of them are very tightly done. Some are very loose. So I have different styles. I, I wasn't sure how to find myself in my style. I've done a lot of landscape uh, paintings and oils and acrylics. Um, there was a while where I was painting lots of you know old clipper ships and um, warships and things like that. And I really enjoyed doing seascapes and just painting the waves and the light coming through the waves and that kind of thing. So. Uh, fascinated, even as a kid, I just loved art and the process of imitating life, you know, whether it's even little miniatures and models and dioramas and what have you. I find a lot of that fascinating. Um, <clears throat> now I do more of, um, I haven't done it really in a while, Mark Bustler's painting I did and then I did a couple others right afterwards. In fact, I did a 2010 Corvette Grand Sport Roadster, which I have presently hanging over my desk. I kind of did that one for myself. It's a car that I wanted to buy and missed the boat on that a couple years ago, but uh, it's just nice having it over my desk. It's almost enough since I may be quite a while since I get another uh, Corvette or car like that again, but um, uh, I enjoy doing it. What I'm looking forward to doing is to getting into actually some more of the, um, doing some more car art as well, but getting into doing gaming art of, you know, famous, uh, you know, poster and game logos and stuff and then do my contour cutout concept on those. But uh, before I delve into that, I want to kind of talk about um, more of the car and how, kind of how I developed this concept. So, I had a friend of mine who turned out was having his 50th birthday. And he just bought, he went through a tough divorce. <clears throat> he bought his own condominium, had a nice garage. It was nicely finished inside. And he was a custom car builder. He built a lot of really cool custom street cars. I had bought quite a few cars from him and sold cars to him. He owned a giant uh, automotive repair place in El Segundo, California. And so I went in there for years as a customer. That's how I met him. We became good friends and partied and hung out. Went to the drag races together. And uh, used to go out to the street races, you know, late at night, hang out and what have you. So he was kind of an older, you know, mentor when I was younger in my 30s. <clears throat> you know, he just turned 50. So, uh, you know, he moved into his place. He loved his garage. Man, I want to get my garage all painted. So I'll come over and paint it for you. So I painted it all nice and did some kind of a two-tone stripe deal on the bottom half of it. And he really liked it. And um, I said, you got to let me add this gorgeous like 55 <clears throat> Chevy truck that was all customized and lowered and black really evil looking and he used to wear this Darth Vader helmet and he'd go to all the car shows with this killer black truck had these big Mickey Thompson tires in the back kind of a drag racing you know deal and uh, it was really cool we you know did a lot of cruising and that thing had hung out and he had a lot of other cool El Caminos and trucks and cars and 56 Chevy that was gorgeous, a red and white one lowered and all. So he had a lot of fun, but that truck was like his prized possession. And uh, <clears throat> so for his 50th birthday, I said, you got to let me paint a mural of that truck. He said, oh, dude, that'd be awesome. So uh, I did that for him in his garage. I painted this huge, I think it was like the whole thing overall was maybe 10 or 12 feet wide with the lettering. and Because it looked like the Star Wars. At the time, they were re-releasing Star Wars, like in the early to mid-90s. They re-released it at the theaters. And so when they went to 7-Eleven, they had the soda cups, these big gulp cups. They had these big um, Darth Vader heads on the cups. And they had, like, Luke and Princess Leia and all these different faces and Chewbacca and what have you. So I took one of the cups and I said, man, this is a great picture of Darth Vader, really high contrast. So I, I projected and blew up this big Darth Vader head kind of behind the truck, and I didn't tell him about that. I surprised him and did it. And he came home and saw that and loved it. And I said, that, you know, that I did this thing. It was like, I think I said the dark side of the force, and I had that behind the truck with like a star field in it and the whole deal, and designed the whole deal. And it was kind of on a rough textured wall, kind of a, had a lot of texture to the wall, but I did the best I could to get everything dialed in, and he loved it. And um, he said, he said, you know, the sad thing is, he goes, if I ever move, he says, uh, I, you know, I, first of all, I can't thank you enough for this mural. I love this mural. In fact, he was so happy with it. He did a lot of work. I had a, a 91 Trans Am 
black Trans Am I had at the time. He lowered it for me for free, did the exhaust on it with Flowmasters, did all the stuff, So, which was nice of him. I didn't do it for that reason, but we help each other out a lot. You know, when, when every time we'd move or something, we'd help each other move, or uh, someone was in a pinch or whatever, you know, I'd always be right over there to help him with something. And uh, But he loved the mural, and he goes, the sad part is, he goes, you know when I move, I'm going to have to take this mural with me. And I go, well, God, I hope you're not moving. He says, well, no, I'll probably, you know, be here for years. And he was. He actually stayed there for quite some time. Uh, he just passed away recently. He, he got really ill and um, lots of cigarettes, you know, over the years. And they cut his head, amputate one of his legs. And the poor guy, his health just got worse after that. And then the last, just heard recently, he's passed away, sadly. I haven't been in touch with him since I moved up to Northern California. But uh, as far as I know, he kept that condo right to the end. It's sad now because it's probably been painted over. But he said at the time, he was, if, if, if and when I move, he said, I'm going to have to get a Sawzall and cut this drywall out and take this mural with me. And I thought about that. And I go, you know, that's an interesting idea to cut a mural out and have it with you. Because people move, especially in California, it's such a transient state. And people go from, sometimes you can't afford to buy a place, but you can rent a, rent a nice condominium or home. You stay there for two years or four years, and you move and you get another place. It's a little bigger, or maybe it's closer to the beach or what have you. So, um, And I thought that I should maybe I'll do some kind of portable murals that peep something big. The guys, and I knew a lot of guys that had custom garages with great paint jobs, and they had these old gas station signs and beer signs on. So I started doing a series of garages. And then I did my own garage later when I had my other house in Southern California I bought. And I refinished and painted all the, the attic of the garage, the rafters, and did all the walls, drywalled it all myself and painted it. And I'm going to be doing that soon here you know, in my present home. It's kind of the last frontier for this house. Is I'm building a shed to get rid of a lot of the crap in the garage and then move it out to the shed. And then I'm going to you know, drywall my whole garage, insulate it, and I'll have neon and wall graphics. Kind of do it in a 70s theme. And, uh, and also have a little art studio out there where I can do work as well as this wall I have. When I'm facing here, I have a wall with an easel built into it. And it's set up to where I can do my car paintings in here. And I have a light above it and everything for, for painting. <clears throat> and it works great. This is a great little studio. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so I thought about the concept. I said, I've got to come up with something like this. So I, I said, well, instead of doing it on, you know, drywall, I'll just do it on a piece of special plywood. They have a special plywood that's designed for the sign industry. It's a marine grade, high grade plywood and it has a paper laminate that's hot pressed into it. So it has a perfectly smooth surface so you can illustrate on it or do signs on it and it doesn't show the wood grain or anything. So it's very smooth. And you primer it and you paint it and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's where I kind of came up with this concept is doing it on these plywood pieces and I contour cut them out. I kind of blow the project the car up and I cut out around the outside shape of the car so we can see the wheels and the contours of the you know the fenders and the hood and the hold the roof and everything. Uh, and then I kind of finish it off and uh, I, you know draw it in a lot of detail. You, I project it very loosely to get the basic proportions correct and then I hold the photograph and sit there and then dial every wheel in all the reflections I neatly draw. I, I quite often will improvise. Sometimes there'll be a reflection of a tree, uh, you know, in the side of the car, and I'll remove that, take that out. And so I have to kind of rework the drawing. And that takes like, usually an hour and a half or two hours to kind of clean up just the drawing on one of these big, you know, five, five foot car paintings. And most of them are five feet. The first couple that I did were eight feet big. I did one of the Mad Max Interceptor from the movie Mad Max or the Road Warrior. And I did a huge eight feet. I took a whole eight foot sheet of plywood and cut it out. And I had it down in my garage for years. And, and then eventually even had it up inside my house. Um, and, and, and it looked nice. I had a lot of people. I sold it to a guy in Chicago, bought it, <clears throat> that loved it. It was a big Mad Max fan. Put it on eBay. That thing was gone in like a week. Um, but they were a little large, so I found the perfect size about five feet. And what I can do is I can buy a four by ten foot sheet of plywood and actually cut out a couple, you know, of these big paintings out of one sheet of plywood. So uh, it works out good. I really enjoy doing them. And I, I like working with wood, too. So after I take a jigsaw, I cut out all the edges. I sand the edges down smooth. I prime them. I paint them. I paint the backs of them nice. And um, 
you can watch, you know, Mark's unboxing of his El Camino painting. You can kind of see it up close. So I put several coats, like four or five coats of, you know, polyurethane clear on top. So it has a lot of depth to the color. And they're all done by hand. So if you look real closely, you can see the little brush strokes and how it kind of comprises, you know, all of the highlights and shadows and everything. It's all, it's all done by hand. There's a little bit of airbrushing, too, to soften some of the edges and just add a little bit of highlights that it needs. But uh, I love doing them. I do them in acrylic paints. <clears throat> it, on average, most of the ones I've done take about 24 to 28 hours from start to finish. That's projecting them, cutting them out, drawing them, and illustrating and clear coating complete from start to finish. And back in 2004, <clears throat> I made a go of it to see if I could just make it as an artist. I kind of put my painting business aside and spent probably about nine or ten months just working at full time, going to car shows, selling them, and I sold quite a few. I think I sold like 22 or 23 paintings. Um, I'd put them on eBay and they'd go like hotcakes. The economy was really good back in, you know, the early to mid-2000s, and I, I sold every one, you know, I, with a few exceptions. I mean, they went pretty quick. Uh, think, since things have changed in the economy, people don't have a lot of the disposable income to buy, you know, expensive pieces of artwork, but I really enjoy doing them. I had one fellow that bought nine of them at a car dealership in Florida where he sold a lot of, you know, custom muscle cars to rock stars and movie stars and stuff like that. And uh, he asked me, he bought four of the ones that I had on stock. And he goes, if I sent you the photos, could you do more for me? So I have, you because know, I have, a, you know, a Buick I want done. I've got an Oldsmobile, I have different cars. And I said, yeah, I'd be happy to do it. Send me the photos. I can work off the photos. I can change the color of them, do whatever you want, pretty much. Even change the rims and... So that's kind of what I do, is I do these car paintings, and I just blow them up, and uh, most of them have been kind of classic cars and muscle cars. I did a 1957 custom Chevy. Uh, a fellow in uh, New Hampshire that owns a Sh Chevrolet dealership bought that one for his office. So it's kind of rewarding that people like doing them. Um, I I've also done a lot of automotive murals, and Robert Williams is a really famous uh, Los Angeles illustrator, painter. Did a lot of really cool artwork. I love the guy's work <clears throat> and follow him closely. I've, been, I've met him at a couple uh, art shows down in Los Angeles. Really nice guy. He did a famous, um, huge uh, painting of these kids drag racing these old, you know, rat rods or hot rods, and the cars are, you know, careening end over end. It's just like complete chaos. The cops are chasing them, and almost kind of a cartoon-like nature to it. But it was a really cool mural. And a guy commissioned me in Fresno had a huge car dealership. He says, Dean, I want to have you do signs, a uh, mural, everything. So I did, you know, God, I think 600 feet of stripes around this whole dealership. You could hold 115 cars inside this uh, dealership. And then I did two 8 foot by 16 foot murals. One was actually on a wall. It was of a Mustang. And they had another <clears throat> offshoot business here where they restored Mustangs. And he called it the Mustang Ranch. He traded me a 67 big block four-speed Mustang, kind of like the one in Bullet, the same color green, had, but it had stripes. It had some body damage. Um, he had it fixed for me at the body shop, had the body done, and I did that in exchange for like $16,000 worth of work. So we did a couple big 32-foot signs for him, a lot of hand-painted stuff on the walls, and then I did a giant mural of this Robert Williams. He goes, I love this painting, could you do this? And I even put a Fresno landmark in the background of this uh, dam. A lot of kids go out there and drag race from this big hydroelectric dam. And I kind of stretched the mural out and then added that in the background. And <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. So, And I used to paint cars too. I used to do actual flame paint jobs and old Chevys and Fords and uh, even, uh, you know, tractor trailer trucks. I've done giant custom paint jobs. I did some graphics on a Learjet once and uh, lots of boats and graphics on cars and pinstriping, that kind of thing back again when everything was, you know, done by hand. But today I just kind of relegated to just doing these car paintings. I really enjoy doing something different. It's kind of like thinking outside the box instead of just doing a, a painting on canvas or a drawing. I have lots of friends who are great illustrators and artists, uh, especially with automotive um, arts. I have a couple automotive groups that I belong to that just have nothing but automotive artists. And it's a wonderful uh, community. Kind of like my gaming community. So I have a couple facets to me. One is not just gaming, but, you know, I have a, a lot of love for motion picture. i got a lot of friends that I work with in the motion picture industry. I stay in touch with them. I've got all my car buddies I hang out with. And now I've got my gaming friends in the gaming community, which I enjoy so much. 
So this just kind of shows another facet of my life and the things that I do. Um, but uh, it, it's a fun process. I'm anxious to get back to this house we have is much smaller than our other homes that we've had. And so we've had kind of max out every closet inch of space I have in here. So we're going to build a huge shed. I'm going to actually build right outside my window uh, out here. And, I, and I'll be able to put all of my equipment and things that are in the garage now out there and some of the stuff in my closets and make more room. And then I'm going to finish setting up my studio in here. And I want to get back into painting. I have a painting I'm actually designed for Mark Bustler. I just need to make the time and find all my supplies. and get on it. But I want to do a big five foot cut out of this twisted metal painting that I'd already drew it and designed and sent it to him. He loves it. He's anxious to see it. And I just said, just be patient. I'll do it. He said, no problem. He said, I'll, I'll find a place for it when you get it done. He'll probably put it in his office or something. But I'm anxious to do it for him. Um, but I'm going to start, you know, after I'm, um, I've got a couple other car paintings I've already got drawn. I just haven't cut them out and painted them yet. One of them's already cut out and I've painted about half of it with an old hot rod. But I want to finish those two paintings. I'm going to start doing some uh, gaming art as well. I'll do the same concept. Take an old, you know, Doom uh, poster with a Doom logo and the, the guy with a, with a gun, and I can contour cut out around that whole deal uh, by hand and paint it. You can just imagine, you know, Quake or Doom or an old Duke Nukem would really be cool cut out. Um, there's just no end to what you could do. I, I love it. In fact, I just downloaded off from the PlayStation Network the wonderful Shock Troopers game. Um, that was an old, it was one of those old Neo Geo games, and I thought that would really be cool to do the Shock Troopers logo with the cutouts of the characters with the guns and the whole deal would really be hot. So I, I got some great ideas, you know, this Twisted Metal one will be the first one I'm going to do, but I want to start doing some gaming art. They don't all have to be huge and five feet. I can do small ones as well. I did it for my wife's birthday. I did this little bit. She loves Betty Boop. I did a little Betty Boop cutout. It's just a small one. And it's nice. You can contour cut out around the edges and finish the edges nice. Um, she has it hanging in her laundry room, and she loves it. So <clears throat> I thought maybe smaller ones I could do them more affordably. And it'd be fun to do for gamers. Do them for my friends. Uh, do some, put them on eBay, see if they sell. And the beauty is they would be done by hand. They could be commissioned. You could take your favorite uh, gaming characters. I could contour cut them out. So it's it's a it's a goal of mine. I just I was hoping to start on it by January, and it's just it's going to have to get pushed back. I, I just I'm out of room. I need more room. So I've got to. And this room is getting cluttered up with too much stuff. Where I'm losing my room to paint. So I've got to get the shed built outside here, <clears throat> and then I'm going to get right on it. But I wanted to share my my love of art with you anyway. Um, uh, I try to show you here, just in here, I'll have like a slideshow. I'm just showing you a bunch of pictures of the cars that I've done and um, the different murals and automotive related things, which are fun. But you could imagine the application could certainly go to, you know, famous airplanes uh, from World War II. It could be, um, uh, you know, virtually anything. It could be, you know, trucks or off road vehicles, <clears throat> uh, airplanes. I even thought of doing what would really be cool would be doing some like Star, Star Wars spaceships or from Battlestar Galactica and even incorporate the logo into it and have a big contour cut out of a spaceship. <clears throat> the Mystery Science 3000 theater logo even, you know, would be great. Of course, obviously, there's copyright and trademark, you know, things to consider, but as long as I'm not mass producing them like in t-shirts or posters, I'd probably be okay with one-off art pieces. So it's something I'm excited about. You know, certainly put your input in the comments as to what type of gaming art you think would be cool along the same you know veins or lines of my car where they're contour cut out. It's just something I'm really looking forward to doing. I'm, I'm definitely will be doing it later this year. I just got to get all my ducks in a row first. Uh, we can get organized. I, I'm the type where I have to have everything organized. I get in that mind frame in that zone and then I'm like non-stop. I just I'll put in tons of time and I usually crank out two to four paintings at a time. And I'll put them on eBay and sell them and then get on to something else. <clears throat> but uh, I'm really excited about doing more art, getting back to it. Uh, my plan is as I get older, and I'm, you know, I'm already at the age now, I'm 51, it's hard for me to you know, climb up and down ladders and work as hard and put in the hours I used to. So for my retirement, because I'll never really retire, I'll just keep working forever until I croak. But I, wanted, I could see myself even in my 70s or 80s doing painting, sitting at an easel, painting things, selling them on the internet. Uh, I want to get back into doing murals. I did a lot of decorative painting things too at homes where you paint the big sky ceilings and 
big open windows, of, um, you know, with the stone work and all the stuff, and little vines creeping up on the walls. And so I, I, I used to, years ago, do a lot of faux finishing and decorative painting in homes, and I've kind of gotten away from that. So I kind of want to get back into that to where I'm one of just a handful of artists that have that craftsmanship that do that type of work. And just uh, instead of being one of, you know, 200 painters in greater Sacramento here. So it, they're, they're dreams that I have. But anyway, that's my little history with art. I thought you might find it interesting. Uh, I love art to death. And I just, like, I look for the, the artistic elements in films. I love, you know, art production and, and movies. I love to see it in games, even, you know, handsomely designed menus, uh, box art. <clears throat> just the overall graphic art style, like a, a game like, uh, uh, you know, Bioshock Infinite with a gorgeous sunlight and the Cloud City and all that. I just love that kind of stuff. Anything that has uh, visually arresting um, images is just <clears throat> incredible. I, I can't get enough of it. So let me know in the comments, you know, what uh, what kind of art is are you drawn to? What kind of art do you like? What kind of art styles and games do you like? What would you like to see in the way of gaming-related art if you like this concept and you'd like to see me do something? I have a few ideas in mind. I just haven't really focused too much on it, but I'm really anxious to um, to get to it as an artist. I feel like I'm wasting my talent. You know, I'm, I, sometimes I feel guilty because I'm playing <laughs> video games all day, and perhaps I should be doing something with my art. So. Um, my family never gives me, I never hear the end of it, oh, you're wasting your talent, you should be doing something with your art. And then when I'm doing something with the art, I should be doing something something else, you know, that they think I should be doing or whatever. But anyway, that's my uh, little rant on <clears throat> my art. I hope you found it interesting, just something that um, I wanted to share. Uh, this show, just another facet to another side of me and my interest. I'm going to be doing a few more of these little personal things if you find them interesting about some of my other hobbies and interests along the way too. So uh, for you, if you have any artistic ability yourself, let me know in the comments. Steve Benway surprisingly just said recently that he's also an artist and enjoys doing it. And I'm fast. I'd love to see some of his art as well. So uh, if you have any links or things you want to put in the comments or um, things that you enjoy doing artistically, uh, you know, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'd certainly enjoy uh, reading that or seeing any links that you have. So. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Enjoy your games, enjoy your art, enjoy your films, and just enjoy life, because that's really what it's all about. Cheers.